I'm seeing Bangalore living here for the last almost 30 years. The way the city is growing, <coughs> what's happening? The skyscraper coming up, right? And someone told me some time back, I think one day all those huge apartments will be haunted by ghosts. No one will be living there. <coughs> if you don't, I was talking to Dr. Ravi Kumar, the situation we are discussing right now, all of us, the water crisis that we are experiencing now. He says major threat 10 years from now. That's what will happen. People will leave. That's why I'm saying if you don't adhere to the natural and the moral laws, nature has its own way of dealing with that situation, reversing it. So do we want to use our wisdom to reverse things or we are going to let go the way and allow the nature to do it, nature to correct it. That's the way we are. Okay, coming back before we talk about urban health, uh, I'm concerned about generally urban health and I talk about health of the urban poor, the urban rich, Right, that's what. Before we go to the urban poor health, I'm concerned about your health and my health now. Now I'm talking about, we are living in a globalized world, right? It's wonderful, the many positive sides of this globalization. <coughs> Do you and I have a choice to be healthy? That's my question. How healthy are you? How healthy am I? Am I? Then I'll come back to health of the urban poor, your health and my health now. Do you and I? have a choice to be healthy in a globalized world? Yes. yes. We have a choice. Always. Always. This is where we have left various ways. We are all of us are responsible for the way the world is going. We are left into the market, the market driven world where health is a commodity. You're very right, all that. The earth, the air we breathe in freely is polluted. The noise, pollution, the food completely, the food that we eat, the maize in the food, GMO food. What do we know about GMO food? How safe it is? Isn't it? Do we know that? Isn't how safe? The market do not want just any controls, any this. All they say, it's all tested. Who knows? Researched. All that they say, it is not. So that's the world we are living in. It's a very, very difficult. We don't know how we are going to reverse the whole thing. Living in a globalized, capitalistic, corporate-led world where health is a commodity. That's a big challenge for us. Health and medical care is a commodity. See, before, let's understand the healthcare model that we have. The history of Western medicine in India dates back to 1600, when the first medical team arrived from British. As we know that, British came here, isn't it? They developed the system, but they did not develop for the entire country. So challenge is then, when they were starting this Indian Medical Service, British, the challenge then was epidemic diseases that were devastating effect during the period where plague, we don't have plague now, thank God we have eradicated. Leprosy, still a problem, to great extent we have controlled. Cholera, not fully gone. Malaria, still a problem, he was talking about next, TB is a major problem still. After independence, the British left about 200 years, they served the Indian Medical Service, left it to the Indian elite. After they went, what did they did? They found their inadequacies of managing, so they invited the Western experts. We still do that. We continue to do that. Because the model we are following still predominantly the British model. So we continue to invite. The large number of foreign experts were invited to play a dominant role in almost every facet of the health service system in the country, even after independence. See, all this led to the doctors we were training were not suitable to the country. British model, Western oriented, curative oriented, as an end, what, what happened? Brain drain, most of them left the country. Today, what's happening? Dr. Ravi Kumar Asha talking about the two key issues the public health system struggles from are, are, are here in the country is no health human resource. Look at the figures now. 2016, 412 medical colleges training 52,965 doctors every year. Still, there are no doctors in the public health system. Why? So what's happening? We have exported doctors. 
the best medical college are exported to the west coast and then other doctors are not <coughs> willing to serve where it where the need is there the preventive and social medicine the, so this is important there are many health committees they were set up see we are very even now it goes on setting up committees after committees and all the committees are the right things if you look at all the committee i'm referring only one committee sir joseph bore committee talk about health service development committee said the right thing but he said the physicians that we train for india need to be a social physician so most of the committee said the right thing but we simply did not have the political will to do the right thing that's a problem so they set up preventive and social medicine see again talk or social orientation of medical education by default the medical education system the model is curative western oriented you want to give a social orientation to that that's what we're doing today we live longer but we live longer but quality of life we live longer with sickness is that what we want <coughs> that what the western medical system has done to us the biomedical the western oriented then that we live longer with illnesses that's all is that what we want so what is this western model of medical system what we have is not we simply people are often using it's not synonymous healthcare and medical care are two different most often people are talk healthcare medical care as healthcare do you agree with me difference two different thing when you talk about health you have to talk differently when you talk about see here all this which focused on the british oriented the medical system that medical model of health system medical model of health system that a british helped us to develop we are still following see that it focuses on disease patient individual provide see health cannot be provided medical care can be provided health has to be enabled and empowered for health you cannot provide health care you can provide medical care you can provide medicine treatment so it's providing again professional control see country like when we don't have doctors what do we do both urban and rural areas how do we manage now have has anyone seen here uh, where there is no doctor there's a book has anyone okay you can google search and look for it it may be available i happen to meet this person also i think he's still alive a south um yeah you worked a lot of work in south america and he wrote a book called it where there is no doctor it's a lovely book demystified a lot giving health worker empowering the health worker see what do we do when the doctor cannot reach a place when there is a medical problem how do we do many of the things we can manage when this book was introduced am i who opposed this doctors i am a indian medical association opposed it so till they want have professional control i am a doctor i know it you leave it to me then health as a commodity <coughs> that's what is done this the system is done medical model is done those who have money buy it other suffer it then healthcare see it's a shame to call healthcare industry do you agree with me healthcare industry how many billion people talk about how many billion it's worth healthcare in industry healthcare industry in india are you comfortable in calling healthcare is an industry is it an industry <coughs> So it's a fundamental right. We have fundamental right to life. A constitution we have right to life, but no right to health. It's a prerogative. How can you be live a meaningful life without health? Isn't it? You said you have a right to life, but no health. What does it mean? In my view, no. In my view, both. See, without which you can't survive, isn't it? Basic. Without healthcare, you can't survive. 
So it has to be a service sector. You cannot make money out of healthcare. In my view, both education and health has to be free in the public domain. If anything happens to you, where do you go? Where do you seek help? Private hospitals. Private corporate. Right? I vouch you, I challenge you. If you, you go to public health, despite all its the condition status, they will do less harm to your body than the private hospital is doing. We think the glamour is so beautiful, five star. That's what we think. But what you are sharing completely do not want to be regulated, control. Okay, now going back to the previous slide, medical college, I have seen. What are these medical college doing? He said, no. Substandard, we are training substandard doctors and nurses in this country. They play with our bodies. Do you know that? Another major problem with the corporate hospital is they will write. That's what the medical model can Unnecessary prescriptions. Unnecessary diagnostics. <coughs> and then the last minute you go for a delivery, normal delivery. If you are below 30, you can deliver normally. But they got a C-section. You see, most corporate hospital, majority of delivery happens are C-section. Why is that so? I'll give an example. My wife had a problem, a gynecological problem. Taken to, I, I can name the hospital. I've confronted them, Fortis. First question is, what insurance package you have? <laughs> right? Or we can do it one lakh. Since I worked in the health sector, I told them nothing doing. Let's take a second opinion. Okay, I took her to St. John's. The gynecologist, we paid only the, the gynecologist said, nothing doing, you don't need surgery. I'll teach you simple exercises. It's more than five years, no surgery. So she's fine. So the way the language works, I'll explain another uh, colleague of mine son of a director of IAMB, a doctor. He was in 40s and he walked out too. He said, he was, this is what happening because most of us be access service, we think our perception about this private corporate is good, glamorous, high quality. No, it's not true. Very few maybe. This guy walked out of that hospital because he was given a target writing unnecessary prescription, he was an ethical practitioner, unnecessary diagnostic, and this much revenue should get it. He said, how can I write it when I don't need that pass There's no need for this investigation. Okay, I want to say a few more minutes and then see urban family welfare in the 50s, 16s, 60s of the population explosion was a threat to India. So they wanted to control the population. 70s, they thought, okay, we are able to control, so now they can we think of health. By then, Health for All declaration came, Alma Atta. WHO said, there is a major, all the WHO member countries have a problem. There is a new approach needed to reverse this health, you know, improve health really. So how can we do that? So they came out with primary health care as an approach to achieve that. That's what Dr. Ravi Kumar was talking about. All the three tier system, PHC, Subcenter and uh, CHC you're talking about. But again, that system was busy family welfare. That's a problem. But if you look at primary health care, there are, if you, eight elements of primary health care. First thing to talk about water and sanitation, education about diseases, MCH, nutrition. So only seventh treatment of common ailment of the seventh or eighth component. See now, family welfare also MCH, mother and child health or maternal child. Now currently the government talking about major focus in the health plan, RCH reproductive and child health. Anybody here Canada speaking? I laughed at it whenever, you know, what's the meaning for this RCH in Canada, reproductive health? I laughed at it when I heard. Santan Urpati Aragya, which means health of your reproductive, your uterus. Which part of the body does a woman need health? You know what they do? They're looking every woman as a time bomb. Our uterus is a machine, bomb, time bomb contributing to population expo. Therefore, you know what? Very sadly, some of we are fighting. Buy one, get one free. Doctor, insurance has done. Thanks to health insurance, what is done in Andhra and Karnataka is buy one, get one free. You know what? You go for appendicectomy, your uterus will be removed. If your uterus is removed, 
Young women below 30, their uterus is done away. We are fighting the case. Who is doing medical fraternity? All this. International monetary, they are, they are the major player. IMF, the World Bank, hundreds of them made what the recent globalization, the corporate model, they made rich, richer, poor, poorer. It produced few. We have seen that. We are seeing that. The wealth of the world is being concentrated every year in fewer and fewer hands. See this quickly, you, look, you must look at it. Struggle with world's priority. See that? Basic education for all. We need 6 billion. Cosmetics in US in 8 billion. I'm not saying that. Human Development Report of 2006 gave the statistics. Look at water and sanitation, 9 billion. Ice creams in urine, 11 billion. This is the world priority. This is the world we are living in. So now I will stop my talk here now. It's left to you and me now. We have to join, how to join. Say I'm part of a movement called People's Health Movement, www.phmovement.org. Connect there and I leave my number. We, we have to change, we can change it now. Are we going to continue with the medical model I spoke about later or we want it to shift? See that? The social model is what we want, where you and I have, have autonomy, control over our health. That's what we want. Somebody cannot dictate to us. And then we have to move from individual to community. Patients, see that, that you know, doctors refer to the case, TB case, malaria case. There is a patient, there's a person behind a patient. How do they treat? The person is a person. Don't reduce them to a case. Then beneficiary and target to active participant. We have a say, we should have. Professional control I spoke about, we must change it to demystifying. Then medical service to social determinants, social determinants of health we have to address. RCH to women's health and empowerment. That's why we need to shift it. Technology drug vaccine to education social process. Commodity to fundamental right. We have to change it.